Hi everyone, my name is Eric Ratomero and I work in the research IT department at the Jackson Laboratory, which is a nonprofit research institute based in Bar Harbor, Maine. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Scikit Image, which is a Python library for image processing in general. Before I go any further, I'm going to say that all the material I'm going to be using here is based on a colleague of mine's material for his Scikit Image uh, course. So I've just adapted things and there is going to be a link to the original material in the description. So if you want to know a little bit more about Scikit Image and extend on the stuff I'm going to be showing here, uh, feel, feel free to, link, to click on that link and, and go to his course. Okay, so let's just start. Um, I'm going to assume you have some familiarity with Python to follow this. Um, so I'm not going to go into the details of what exactly I'm doing in terms of uh, the Python language. I'm just going to be showing you the features for Scikit Image. So I'm going to start by just importing NumPy and some stuff from Scikit Image. So I'm just importing the input output model, module and the data module. And now I'm going to get the astronaut image from the data module and I'm going to use the IO functionality to show it. So that's a pretty simple thing and you get an image. So that's um, thing number one can do with, with second image is just uh, see an image. And if you have a look at what the type of that image is, you will see that it's imported as a NumPy and array. And if you know NumPy, you know that this is already a useful uh, format to have things in. So if I show you what image actually is, you will see that it's an array and it's an array that has uh, three dimensions. So you will see that it's actually a matrix of triplets and each triplet is uh, red, green, and blue values for each individual pixel. And as you remember, it's a color image. So each pixel is actually three different values. And you can see what that actually looks like. If you look at the shape, you see that it's a 512 by 512 by three image. So it's 512 by 512 pixels, each pixel three values. So things you'll normally do in NumPy or in Python in general, like uh, partial indexing of uh, of something um, it still works. So for example, if I take a, a, just a slice of the image, which is just like these specific pixels and you look at the shape, then now you have um, a sub image that is 200 by 150 pixels. And it's still like three values for each individual pixel. And if I have a look at that, you'll see that it's just the astronaut's face. If I do that, so if I do the same thing I did here, but I specify that I only want uh, the, the, the first value of each individual pixel, then what you get is a 200 by 150 image without the three values per pixel. And if I show that, it's going to be a black and white version of that image. It's actually just the red channel on that image. You can do, you can go even more specific. So you can just pick an eye, for example. So it's a pretty limited part of the face that's a, that was already like a re-slice of the whole image. And in that case, you can see the whole thing as a single matrix. And the matrix is just the value for each individual pixel. And here, of course, face is already the, the black and white version of that. So you get one value per pixel. So if you show that, you will see this. And here you can start to relate the actual values on the matrix to the values in terms of grayscale. So you'll see that the higher the value, the brighter the pixel is. And you can get individual values if you want. So I22 is this guy here, so it's 59. And of course, I've done it with the, with the data from the data module in Scikit Image, but it just you can just open uh, any data file you were interested in. So in this case here, I have this PNG file. So if I just do this, you have an image open. Uh, so we can have a look at the number of dimensions in this image. We should be aware now that you have two dimensions for the pixels and one dimension for red, green, and blue values so that you have a color image. So you have three dimensions. And if you look at the shape, it's something that we have seen before already this amount of pixels and three values per pixel. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a proper back and 
black and white version of that image. So instead of just taking the red values, I'm actually going to do to use this one, this uh, function called RGB to gray. So that's actually going to do the proper calculation to get uh, luminosity values for each individual pixel. And I'm also just going to rescale this image so that it's smaller. So I'm just going to make it half as big as it was. So if I do this whole thing, now I have a black and white version of that image that is just uh, 300 something by 300 something instead of 600 something by 600 something. And I can save that as a specific, uh, as a separate image. So you see that it's complaining that you're converting from floats to ints, that's fine. Um, you can convert it before saving if you don't want to see that warning, but for what we're doing, that's fine. Um, so here, I'll also just uh, open a second image, which is uh, a bright field image from a microscope. And uh, you see that in this case, it's an image that is 4, 42 by 422 by 40. And 40 here is the number of uh, Z slices on this image. So if I try to show this image, it's going to complain that it doesn't know how to show images that are X by Y by 40. It knows how to do it if this was 3, because it would assume that it's just RGB, but it doesn't know if it's 40. So what we can do is we can show individual slices of this image. So if I choose just the first slice of that image, then I get something. If I show slice 35, then I also get something that is different from this. So you see that it, these are different images. And of course, because this is a Z stack, you can do projections. So in this case here, for example, I can do a minimum projection of that image. I can also do a maximum projection of that image. So this is how you would deal with uh, 3D data from a microscope, for example, in scikit image. Okay, so now I'm going to show you uh, a few filters. Um, so before we start doing any filtering, I am introducing here this idea of a morphology element. So it's a selecting element. In this case here, I'm using a selecting element that is a square that is three by three. So if I print that, you'll see that it's just a one, 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 one. It's a three by three square. So I I would just reuse the, the black and white version of the blocks I had before. So in this case here, I am doing the conversion to um, to integers from floats that we had a complaint before, and I'm actually inverting this image. So um, I am everything that was white is now black. Everything that was black is now white. Um, so now I'm going to start using filters, and you can see that in scikit image in the filters uh, sub uh, library you have this rank collection of methods. And then you have stuff like rank maximum, rank minimum, rank median. And if you know rank filters, essentially they take an area and, and they rank the value of the pixels in that area. And then they pick what the new value is going to be based on that rank and in some kind of heuristic. So in this case here for maximum, it would rank all the pixels and take the maximum one. Minimum would take the minimum, median would take the median. So we can have a look at what that looks like. And here, the area that is being uh, used to select the maximum is that selecting element we have defined. So it's a three by three square. So you can see that uh, for the maximum filter, it just makes the brighter areas slightly fatter. Um, and that's essentially what you would expect from uh, a max rank filter. Uh, minimum will do the opposite. So everything gets skinnier. And then median essentially uh, gets rid of the noise without actually changing the borders. So you will see that, for example, compared to the original where you had all these stripes here at the background in C and in B, for example, that is largely gone when you use the median filter. Uh, but the shapes you have are largely kept. And of course, it's very easy to change the area that is being uh, used to to select things. So if I do a 10 by 10 square instead, you will see that uh, when I do max, for example, it just blows up everything much more. If I do min, 
it's just gonna essentially get rid of all the 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 finer shapes if i do median it should still be a decent do a decent job it just kind of blurs everything a little bit but you still get the the, the general shapes pretty well so those are rank filters. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about edge detection. So if you have an image and you can, you want to find where the edges are, one way of doing that, for example, in second image in the filters uh, subsection, you have this pre uh method that would do something like that. And it does a pretty good job out of the box. It's, um, it's a pretty straightforward thing to use and it, it does a pretty decent job. Another way you can do edge detection is by using uh, Laplacians. And if you want to know about Laplacians, you can go to my colleague's uh, course in the link below. Um, but if you use a Laplacian, you will see that you actually get values that go from uh, positive to negative. And it's essentially uh, telling you when there is a decrease in values, it will give you a negative value. When there's an increase in values, it will get you a positive value. So to give you more detail, I am just zooming into one specific area here. And essentially the edges are every time you cross zero. So here you go from, from negative values to positive values. So this place here where you're crossing from negative to positive is probably an edge. Same thing here, same thing here. Finally, I'm going to show you very quickly a Gaussian filter, which is a blurring filter, which is very good at getting rid of noise, for example. So this is what the Gaussian kernel looks like. So this is essentially what's going to be convoluted with your whole image. And again, if if these terms sound foreign or if these terms don't really you don't really understand them, I recommend going to the full course and and trying to have a better understanding of the final points here. I'm just going through things pretty fast, so I don't have time to dig into this very much. But this is essentially a 2D version of this. So this is a Gaussian curve. If you imagine this rotated in space, what you would get is something like this. So now if I apply that to our blocks, what I get is this. And this is based on the sigma value you have here. So if I do sigma five instead, I get more blurry. And if I do sigma 10, it gets even blurrier. So essentially the amount of sigma you use here is how much blur you are applying on your image. Finally, I'm going to show you how to do segmentation in scikit-image. So this is just a very quick introduction on how to do thresholding. So to do that, I'm going to reopen the blocks image. I'm going to convert it to a grayscale. I'm going to invert it. And then I'm going to take just the values that are above 0.7 in that image. And what you get is something like this. So this is essentially the equivalent to a manual threshold where you're setting that the threshold in this case is 0.7. Of course, there is uh, a very rough way of selecting what that is. And you see that the result is essentially just uh, a matrix of true and false values, where true are values that are considered to be foreground and false are values that are considered to be background. Um, as I said, this is a very rough way. You're selecting things manually. You can do things automatically. So you can, um, from your filters, you can try all the thresholding methods. And what you get out of that is um, a nice image with the results for each individual one. So you see that this is the original. Uh, most of the methods seem to detect A pretty well, but then for everything else, they just consider everything to be foreground, which is not ideal. Minimum and Yen do a slightly better job on C and B, uh, especially Yen does a pretty a, a, a better job. Um, but of course, we can see that in the original, the, the brightnesses were changing a lot, which means that A is easy to detect and the rest is not. So we can try to use uh, local thresholding instead of global thresholding. And that's what this NI black uh, method does. Uh, so essentially, it, it calculates thresholds locally. So in this case, you see that it generates A, B, and C pretty decently. It detects some background here, some background here, which is not ideal. So what we can try to do is combine this with, for example, the Lee result here that detects background pretty well and, and try to get both results together. And then we at, at least we can get rid of this and this. And that's what you can do pretty easily here. So essentially, I'm just doing it and uh, logical operation because they're both 
matrices of just bin uh, binary values, Boolean values. So uh, it's easy to combine them in logical ways like this. Finally, you can label each individual region that you find here. So to do that, you will need to import a measure from scikit-image and I'm importing label to RGB here because it makes it easier to visualize things. So what I'm doing is I am labeling each individual area that is connected here and I'm using connectivity one, which is for connectivity. So things are only connected if things above, below, left and right are the same as them. There we go. So it's, it's fairly rough, um, but you can see that the borders and the letters are pretty well defined. If you wanted to actually do a better job here, there's a lot of stuff you can do to make things uh, nicer. But uh, you can change the kind of connectivity you're using. So here I'm changing to connectivity two, which means that things on diagonals are also considered to be connected. Uh, but you see that for example, the uh, this region here now is considered to be connected to the whole border here because there are pixels touching here, while here it was considered to be different. So if you want disparate regions to be connected, then you would increase the connectivity. If you want things to be more separated, then you would decrease connectivity. So that's an incredibly quick overview of very basic things in scikit-image. Of course, there is a lot more you can do. Of course, there is a lot more to dig in, even on the things I talked about. But this is um, just a short video to give you an introduction to it. If you're interested, go to the full course. Link is in the description. Uh, there is a lot of documentation from Scikit-Image, and it's a really, really powerful library if you're doing things in Python. So if you are interested in more videos like this, subscribe to the Jackson Laboratory channel on YouTube. We have been doing a bunch of those. And other than that, thank you for your attention and thank you for watching.